In today's video, I'll take you through the process I followed to diagnose a bad fuel pump in my 2000 Ford Expedition. I'll show you the test I uh, ran to determine that it was the fuel pump as being bad. Once we put the new fuel pump in, I'll show you those test results as well. And if you stay tuned to the very end, I'll show you how much money I saved doing the repair myself. A couple of the symptoms I experienced when faced with this problem. Number one, it was taking my vehicle longer to get started. About a, over a month's worth of time, it was taking the vehicle progressively longer and longer to get started. That was number one. Number two, once it gets started and, and I hit that gas pedal, I couldn't keep it running. It was stalling out once I hit that gas pedal. Those two things in combination let me know I had a problem that I need to take a closer look at. Here's a rundown on the tools I use to troubleshoot this issue. Number one, get you a good digital multimeter and some leads. Number two, a fuel pressure gauge. Number three, a power probe three. Now uh, this is optional. I'm gonna use this tool to do some voltage drop testing at the fuel pump. Uh, next tool, a USB oscilloscope. You can pick these up for a re reasonable price. I'm gonna use this to look at the current waveforms associated with the fuel pump. In order to do that, I'm gonna need my low amp clamp. And also lastly, you're gonna need some miscellaneous um, wires and connectors in order to connect both the oscilloscope and the digital multimeter. So what I've done now is I've connected my fuel pressure gauge to the Schrader valve on my fuel rail. The forge that I've worked on, the great thing about them is they provide a, sh a Schrader valve so you can connect your fuel pressure gauge straight to that valve itself without having to splice in the gauge um, so what you see here is that at idle, I'm looking at, what's that, about 14 PSI? That is way low for this system. I think the spec was at idle, I should be anywhere from 30 to 50. So not only would I have low pressure at idle, but when I snap the throttle, I don't know if you can see that, but that needle goes down. So when I open up that throttle plate with my hand, my pressure was going down. That's not a good sign. That's telling me my, that fuel pump cannot keep up with an additional amount of air I'm introducing into the engine. So that is another uh, piece of evidence that, that let us know that, hey, we need to take a closer look at this fuel pump. So this is the fuse that powers my fuel pump. It's a 20 amp fuse. You see me pointing to it with the pencil. Now that we've got that identified, let's remove it and do some testing. These connectors here, I'm taking the fuse out, put a special connector in there that allows me to put my multimeter in series with the fuel pump, on the fuel pump circuit, and you see I'm drawing two amps. So that's a low amp, that's a low amperage with this fuel pump circuit. Um, at this point, I'm suspecting I got a weak pump, but in order to be uh, certain, I need to check the power and ground feeds to the pump before we call it a, uh, a weak fuel pump. So here I was able to take my USB oscilloscope and my low amp current clamp to calculate RPM. That is how fast my pump is turning revolutions per minute. And you see it's slow. It should have been in the 3409 to 10,000 RPM range. And we're outside of that. I'll give you a better explanation of this calculation and how I hooked everything up after we get the uh, new pump in. So the next step is very important. So all the evidence right now is looking like we got a bad fuel pump. But before we can call a bad fuel pump, we got to check to make sure we got a good ground and a good power feed at our fuel pump. So let's do that now. So we've got the connector back probed at our fuel pump. The wire, our hot wire going to the fuel pump is a pink wire with a black tracer. Power probe is showing that positive, that red light there and it's beeping. That's saying that we have a good power feed going to the fuel pump. Keep in mind that my vehicle is running right now. So I am doing a loaded circuit test on the fuel pump and we have confirmation that we have a good power feed. Now let's go and test and see if we have a good ground. So we're doing our ground side voltage drop testing now. That same connector, instead of that pink and black wire back probed, we got the black wire back probed. So I've got a sewing needle, I've got it back probed, the vehicle is running. So let's use our power probe three uh, to connect to it. And the thing with the power probe, we know that once we connect this loaded circuit, once we connect it and we get that beep, it's that light should be green and we're going to get a, uh, a beep now. It's a lower tone than the other one. Once we get that, we know we have a good ground. 
because the power probe is going to do that voltage drop for us. So here, making contact. It's actually beeping. You can't hear that. And I got the green light. And that's confirmation that we got a good ground feed at our pump. So we know we got a good power feed at our pump. We got a good ground feed. Our um, fuel pressure is low. We know we got low current. At this point, we can say, hey, we've got a bad fuel pump. So now let's replace it and do some testing. So with the engine idling now, we're going to go back and look at our fuel pressure test. Before we had 16 PSI. Now with the new pump in, we have 33 PSI. So that's within spec. Now let's move on to our next test. The amount of amperage here that the fuel pump is pulling, five amps. Using my fuse buddy connection. Got an inline fuse. Here, five amps. We go to the scope. Our scope is verifying that. Move our decimal places. Decimal place two point. Uh, move our decimal place two points, uh, two spots to the left. So we're pulling about five amps. Um, we can calculate RPM. We know it's a eight commutator segment, so we count one, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight. And we look at the delta time between those. The delta time is going to be 8.240 milliseconds. And the calculation you use to get RPM is 60,000 divided by 8.240 milliseconds. So that's going to give us an RPM of about 7,282 um, revolutions per minute. Remember, in our old pump, we weren't getting that. So this is just confirmation that we uh, fixed the problem. So this is the comparison I told you I was going to do at the very beginning. Shop number one, this is a national chain. If I were to call the name, you definitely have one close to you. They wanted $840. Shop number two wanted $700. This is an independent shop. They were a little cheaper. You see, to get the fuel pump assembly shipped to my house and the fuel filter, I only paid 76 bucks. So... I saved about somewhere between $600 to $800 doing it myself. And what's awesome about doing it yourself is that you can set aside the money that you saved. In my case, six, somewhere between $600 and $700. I can set aside a portion of that and reinvest in my tools. So I did that. That's the money I used to buy. I used some of that money to buy my USB oscilloscope and my low amp current clamp. So now, the next time I face with a similar issue for my vehicles, or my friends and family's uh, vehicles, I can help them out and hopefully save them some money as well. I hope this video helped you out. Have an awesome day, and thanks for watching.